Now to the incident desk, where we invite the police to appeal to you directly. Tonight, the see-through watch that could solve a murder in Southport, the faces and voices of two armed robbers in Sussex, and the travelling con man last seen in Luton. Here are Constable Helen Phelps and Superintendent David Hatcher. A cat burglar, well, actually a dog burglar, obviously saw last month's incident desk when I appealed for the return of five precious puppies from a kennel in Hampshire. The next night, a family in south-east London found a tea chest on their doorstep with a note which read, Call police, dogs on TV. The puppies, I'm happy to report, were reunited with their litter. In the first of tonight's cases, we'd like you to look at this watch. If you've come across one identical to it within the last five weeks, you could help solve a murder. 31-year-old Nigel Bostock was stabbed and strangled to death in his home on the evening of Friday, December the 19th. That's a Friday before Christmas. He lived alone in a bungalow in a village near Southport, Lancashire, and owned a shoe shop in Wesley Street in the town centre. Nigel Bostock was gay and may have been killed by someone who knew him. Whoever it was took 700 pounds of shop takings and some jewellery from his home. The watch was exactly like this. It's a Bulova Aquatron Space View, and this particular range was discontinued 10 years ago. It works on a battery, and Bulova, the manufacturers, believe it's the only transparent watch without a winder ever to go on the market. It's got a gold-coloured bracelet with a steel back. We'd like to hear from anyone who's recently been offered one exactly like this. And we'd also like a young man called Carl to call us. He's got sandy collar length hair and he's slim. We know he was a friend of Nigel Bostock and we think he lived in the same area. Carl, if you're watching, please ring us. You could help solve this murder. Next, two men who are wanted for offences of theft and deception from Humberside and Lancashire to South Wales and the South Coast. Since August, they've travelled the country using stolen checkbooks and credit cards to pay for hotel rooms and hire cars. On October the 26th, the two men stayed at the studio pub in Luton, but that afternoon they left rather hurriedly, one through a window at the back of the building. And at the same time, the manager found £3,000 gone from the office. But in their haste, the men left this camera in their room. The film produced photographs of two men who bear a striking resemblance to the two who left so suddenly. We obviously like to speak to these two. We think they may be called Graham and Anthony. If any hotel managers or car hire companies have seen them recently, or if you know who they are, give us a call. Next, an armed robbery just before Christmas at a building society in Shoreham in Sussex. There were two men, and the security video is the first I've seen with colour and a soundtrack. Good morning. Oh, not move at all. Get away from the counter. Get away from the counter. Get away from the button. Get away from the button. One of them had a gold-coloured handgun, and after collecting £1,600, they dashed out into the high street. There's a £1,000 reward in this case, so look closely. Do you recognise either of them? The white one was about 25, stocky and had a London accent. The second man was slightly slimmer and about the same height. If you've seen the two of them together, please ring us now. Finally, somebody watching must be wondering whatever happened to their dinner service. Well, here it is. This 20-piece set of Worcester porcelain is dated about 1770 and it's worth £3,700. It was recovered two years ago amongst a vast haul of stolen property in Cambridgeshire. £130,000 worth of pictures and furniture was returned to its owner, but nobody claimed the crockery. If the owner of this spectacular set is watching now, do get in touch with us, or we may have to sell it in aid of the police fund. And ring us if you can help with any of the other items on our incident desk. If that's yours or you think you can help, the number is 01811 8055. Well, now to the incident desk, where we invite the police to appeal to you directly. This month, WPC Jackie Johnson from Merseyside joins Superintendent David Hatcher from Kent. First, we want to trace about 30 partygoers who could help solve a vicious attack in London's East End. The attack resulted in this man, Trevor Ferguson, losing his sight in one eye and caused two families to move out of their homes. On Saturday the 3rd of January, a party was being held in Beaconsfield Road in Canningtown. 
It was a family birthday party, and most of the guests were black. Around 1am on the Sunday, and again at 3, fumes from some sort of noxious gas were sprayed through the open windows. It seems that someone at another party in Exning Road might have been responsible. Most of the guests there were young white people. Trevor Ferguson and another young man went round to ask them to stop, and that's when Trevor was stabbed in the face and eye. Next morning, another family in Beaconsfield Road discovered racist graffiti on their wall. It was the culmination of four years of harassment, and both families have since been rehoused. When the house in Exning Road was searched, officers found this CS gas canister. But so far, we've only managed to trace three people who were there that night. If you were at Martin Kane's party on Saturday the 3rd of January, or you know someone who was, ring us in confidence. Next, detectives in Shropshire need your help. At 5.30pm on Monday, the 8th of December, an 18-year-old girl was grabbed by a man and bundled into his car. She was driven from Rodham Court in Newport to a lane at the bottom of Broomfield Road, where she was raped. Now, tonight, we, ha we have a combination of clues which might well identify the rapist. The girl helped us to produce a video fit. She thought he was about 40, of medium build, and had dark brown, greasy hair. He probably works outdoors because his face was weather-beaten and he had dirty, rough hands. And he was wearing a black or navy blue sweater with a lion motif like this. His car had one of these large poppies stuck inside the inside of the windscreen. She thinks a small teddy bear, maybe something like this, was hanging on a red ribbon from the rearview mirror. She remembered the interior of the car was beige and it smelt of a sickly air freshener. But now look at this artist's impression. We think it may be the same man. He seriously assaulted a woman in Stafford, only 12 miles from Newport, on the evening of Sunday the 4th of January. Both victims feel either, either face could match the man who attacked them. So if you know anyone who looks like either of these and has a poppy and a teddy bear in his car, please don't hesitate. Call us now. Next on Incident Desk, this man who's robbed building societies in Nottingham, Norwich and Sheffield. Here he is in action in Norwich in January, where he got away with £4,600 from the National and Provincial. We suspect he's not local to Norwich because he's carrying a Presto shopping bag, yet there's no Presto supermarket in the city. The glasses he wore were probably part of his disguise, and don't let the blonde hair fool you, it's almost certainly a wig, because he decided to dispense with it when he carried out a similar raid at the Abbey National in Nottingham on December the 17th. But notice how he's wearing exactly the same woolen hat and padded jacket. If you think you know him, please give us a ring. Since joining the Merseyside Traffic Division, I haven't yet had cause to stop one of these. They're vintage motorbikes and they belong to Keith Aston, a collector from Birmingham. In the early hours of Boxing Day, six bikes worth £10,000 were stolen from his garage. A vintage fella set, just like this one, was taken. The registration was EHA424, but it had a slightly smaller engine than this. A beautiful old James motorbike with a 225cc engine was also stolen. And there's the number again. It was registered back in 1922, and here's the logbook. The first proud owner would have paid about £55 for it then. It's now worth about £2,500. But I like this one best. It's a 500cc Sunbeam from the 50s. This is an S7 model, but a grey S8 was stolen. The other three which went were a 50s Vincent, and from the 30s, a BSA and a Triumph. All Mr Aston's bikes are lovingly restored and he would dearly like to get the stolen ones back. So if any of my colleagues in traffic or anyone else has seen any of them, do please call. And finally, we'd like you to take a look at this. It once belonged to Henry VIII's grandmother, Lady Margaret Beaufort, and was bequeathed to the nation on her death. It's very delicate, that's why I'm wearing gloves. It was used by medieval royals as a clothes chest when they were travelling from one country seat to another. Unfortunately, its counterpart has gone missing from the public record office at Chancery Lane in London. That's the place where the nation's most valuable historical documents are kept, from Doomsday Book to copies of Magna Carta. The chest was kept in the record office museum, but staff noticed it had gone missing last year. Prior to that, the building was being cleared of asbestos, so the keeper of the public record can't be sure that the chest wasn't carted away in a skip. Either way, whether it was stolen or not, if anyone watching tonight has seen one of these, please let us know so it can be returned for safekeeping at the public record office. Well, if you've seen that chest or any of those beautiful motorbikes, or if you can help with any of those cases, here's the number 01811 8055.
Now, incident desk, where we invite the police to appeal to you directly. Incidentally, a lot of viewers have asked, who chooses the cases, the police or Crime Watch? The answer is the police usually offer the stories, but Crime Watch makes the choice. Among our items tonight, the shameful case of a con man who's working all over the country, two men who've held up building societies in London, a Surrey man who's di disappeared from his home, and the bird that's flown from Durham. Here are Constable Helen Phelps and Superintendent David Hatcher. First, we'd like you to look at this face. The man has a scar above his right eye and heavily tattooed arms. He may have information that could help solve a number of cases of theft and deception in places as far apart as Leeds and Bournemouth. They're mostly against old and defenceless people. In Epsom, Surrey, money was taken from an 81-year-old lady as payment for repairs to her electric wheelchair, which were never done. In Huddersfield, £220 was taken as payment for a cooker, which never arrived. In London, an 88-year-old lady lost 2,000 Deutschmarks saved for a special eye operation in Germany. Even one of us was fooled. A foreign police officer was offered accommodation in London while he was visiting his sick wife in Bart's Hospital. A £150 rent was paid, but no accommodation was forthcoming. If you've seen this man who may have some information which could help us, ring us now. Next, a couple of building society hold-ups, both of them in London's Baker Street. This picture was taken last October at the Newcastle Building Society. The man is walking out with £2,000 after threatening the cashier. Take a closer look at him. We also know he's got a scar running down his left cheek to his mouth. Another Baker Street Building Society was held up on Tuesday last week. Notice the man is older than the average armed robber. He may even have left his false teeth at home. He passed over this note to the cashier, which had newspaper cuttings on it about two armed robberies. In fact, the robber was forced to leave empty-handed, but three days later, he phoned the building society and threatened the staff. We think he was also involved in an armed robbery at Ciro Pearls, the jewellers in Old Bond Street, London, in January. This time, he got away with £4,000 worth of gold jewellery. Staff from both the building society and the shop say he had a slight Scottish accent. Look at him again, and if you recognise him, please give us a call. Next, we'd like your help to find Stuart Kerno, who's probably alive but might prefer us to think he's dead. Last December, Mr Kerno's wife Winnie was found dead at their home in Streatham, South London. Forensic tests failed to find what caused Mrs Kerno's death, but when officers called at their home, they found a suicide note, not from Mrs Kerno, but from Mr. Kerno. We've since discovered that he spent the next four days at hotels in London and Bournemouth. On the fourth day after his wife's death, Mr. Kerno sent his Bournemouth hotel bill and his passport to a police station, together with a second suicide note. This time, he planned to drown himself at sea. Frogmen were called in to search Poole Harbour, but Stuart Kerno's body was never found. Since then, we've discovered that Mr. Kerno, an outwardly respectable businessman, was leading a double life. He owed debts amounting to over £20,000, ran two sex contact magazines, financed a massage parlour and sublet rooms to prostitutes. He's also suspected of fraud offences. He may well still be driving his own car. It's a gold Ford Granada Gear saloon, registration number A893SYX. If you've seen this car or Mr. Kerno, please ring us. These are the badges for a security guard's uniform. They came into our possession last August, along with some firearms. They may have been used as part of a disguise for a robbery anywhere in the country, but we have no ideas about where they originally came from. If you know where they were made or who sells them, or if you know a security company that uses badges like these, ring us now. Finally on Incident Desk, we'd like you to help us find a missing macaw. Alma Burnstone from Durham had taken her car to the garage on Monday the 23rd of February, but returned to find her home burgled. Amongst the missing items was her precious, precious parrot. This is a picture of him on her arm. Jackie is a scarlet macaw, just like this one, and Miss Burnstone is desperate to find him, especially as he's unwell and needs a special diet. Apparently he says several words, including Hello there, Jackie's a bad lad, where's Alma, and shut up. One word of warning though, he's very aggressive to strangers. Scarlet macaws are very rare, 
So if you've seen one in the last month and are suspicious of where it came from, please call us. If you can help on any of those cases, ring us please now. The number here in the studio, 01811 8055. That's 01811 8055. Well, now to the incident desk, where we invite the police to appeal to you directly. This month, we have some clothing that may identify a murder victim, a penknife that could help trace a man who attacked an 11-year-old in Manchester, and a video which shows a raid taking place on a Surrey petrol station. Here are Superintendent David Hatcher and Constable Helen Phelps. First, we need your help to identify a murder victim. Just yesterday morning, a young woman's body was found near Boxley Village, outside Maidstone. She'd been strangled. Her body was wrapped in these night dresses. They both have writing on. One says, give us a kiss at bedtime, and the other has this bear motif with the words, I can see you. And there's a jacket which was probably hers. It's grey, white and maroon. The woman was about 30, 5 foot 1 and slim. She had black hennaed hair and there's a burn scar on her right upper arm. She also had a deformed left foot. Someone must know who she is. Ring us now. Today, there have been dramatic new developments into the murder of 26-year-old Shaney Warren, who was found in Taplow Lake in Buckinghamshire on Easter Saturday. Shaney lived in Stoke Poges, only four miles from where she was found dead. At 6pm on Good Friday, she finished mowing her lawn and was seen loading the cuttings into her black Vauxhall Cavalier. It's thought she may have intended taking them to her parents' home in Gerrard's Cross, two miles away, but her body was found here. Today, a new witness has come forward who says that at 6.15pm he saw a black car broken down on the A4 just outside Maidenhead and only half a mile from Taplow Lake. He noticed three men and a young woman peering under the bonnet. Could that have been Shaney? And who are the three men? We've also just learned that at 11.30 that night a light blue metro was seen parked in the lay-by at Taplow Lake. Two hours later, Shaney's Black Cavalier was seen parked in the same lay-by. The light blue metro had gone, and so had the keys to Shaney's car. And it's now known that Shaney's brown leather purse is missing. It's an oval shape with two zips. If you can help with any of these leads, ring us now. Next, we'd like you to take a look at two men who've robbed in the south, but may well come from the north. Here they are on February the 17th this year, robbing a petrol station at Blindley Heath, Surrey. They got away with £193, some cigarettes and lighters. We think they are also responsible for other armed robberies in Surrey and Sussex this year. The first man is described as 40 to 45, 5 foot 10, with a beer belly. The second man may be Mediterranean or Asian, about 25, slim and nearly 6 foot tall. One of their victims said they spoke with northern accents, and people who think they met them in pubs in Surrey Remember them saying they worked as crane erectors? Ring us now if you recognise them. Next, we need to find a man who attacked an 11-year-old girl in Manchester last month. Millgate Fields is an open area in the Didsbury suburb to the southwest of the city. On the 25th of March, two girls were out walking there when they were confronted by a man who threatened them with a knife. They've helped us to com compile this video fit of him. He's about 18, 5 foot 10 inches and slim. He has blonde hair with brown streaks and large freckles and was wearing a two-tone anorak. Luckily, one of the girls escaped and ran screaming to her father, who was walking ahead. The attacker ran off. This knife was found later. Notice it has the name Busby on the handle. Look at his face again and ring us now if you know who he is. These beautiful ball gowns were photographed at the NSPCC dress show in the Savoy Hotel earlier this month. They were designed by Annalisa Sharp. But on Tuesday the 14th of April, the evening after the fashion show, thieves broke into her studio in Holland Road, West London, and stole 12 dresses from her treasure collection. Annalise's workroom was completely ransacked. The thieves also took two portfolios containing her life's work in fashion design. These dresses are almost identical to three of those stolen, except one like this had a lurex bodice, and an identical design to this was a much paler pink. The stolen dresses are worth about £400 each and they all have this label in the back. Detectives believe that the dresses may have been stolen to be copied, but someone must know where they are. If you've seen them, call us now. 
The number to call if you can help is 01811-8055, 01811-8055. Well, next now is Incident Desk, where we invite the police to appeal to you directly. Here are Constable Helen Phelps and Superintendent David Hatcher. We start this month with a murder in central London. Alicia Lamoth was 26. She was from the Philippines and she'd been in England just over a year. She had several cleaning jobs, including one regular one at 33 Cork Street in Mayfair, where she normally started at 7.30 in the evening. At 8.30 p.m. on Friday the 8th of May, she phoned a friend to say she'd nearly finished and would be leaving soon. But just after 10, the fire brigade was called when smoke was seen pouring from the building. Alicia's body was found on the fourth floor. She died from colossal head injuries. Whoever attacked her took over 500 pounds from the office and two small tape recorders. One was an Olympus like this. It had the serial number 220491. And the second was a G mark for recording telephone calls. Alicia's handbag and a pair of blue shoes with white rubber soles were also missing. Her handbag had about £45 and a London bus pass in it. Alicia's murderer may have all or any of these in his possession. If you've seen them, please call us. And if you saw Alicia arriving at Cork Street on Friday the 8th of May, or anyone leaving there between 8.30 and 10pm, then we'd like to hear from you. Take a look at this model ship. It was carved by French Napoleonic prisoners of war out of meat bones from their rations. It's valued at about £20,000 and is just one of 37 historic pieces which were stolen from a museum near Lewis in Sussex last week. The museum's in this 16th century house. It was given to Anne of Cleves, Henry VIII's fourth wife, as part of their divorce settlement. Thieves broke in a week ago yesterday and took 28 pieces of silver, including this solid silver trophy, which was presented at Lewis Races in August 1868, and an 18th century mahogany clock with the name of the maker T. Harbin engraved on it. This ladder was found hidden in a nearby garage. It looks as though it's homemade, and someone's written sold times five here with a felt tip pen. The total value of the hall from the Anne of Cleves Museum was £100,000. Ring us if you can help. John Robinson from Lancaster has just come out of hospital where he was recovering from injuries he received from an appalling attack in his own home. Between 1.45 and 2 a.m. on Friday the 10th of April, he was woken by the sound of breaking glass in his house near Rylands Park in Lancaster. As he woke up, someone attacked him in the bedroom with a hammer and a knife. It was lucky his children weren't hurt too, and it was a miracle that Mr Robinson survived. The hammer was a one and a half pound ball pain hammer like this, and it had red tape on it here. The other weapon was a fishing knife, identical to this one. It was sharp on one side and dull on the other. The attacker escaped across Rylands Park and over the railway bridge. From there, he followed the cycle track towards Morecambe. He would have been heavily bloodstained and he was probably quite badly cut himself. So if you live anywhere in the Lancaster area, think back to the night of the 9th, 10th of April and ring us if you think you know who did it. You may remember on Crime Watch in March, our antiques expert, John Bly, showed a collection of stolen fireplaces. Incidentally, they've so far remained unclaimed. Well, this month, we've news of the theft of what must be one of the finest examples of decorative marble fireplaces in this country. It was designed by Charles Adam in the late 18th century and is worth £30,000. Until recently, it was an integral part of this building in New Cavendish Street in central London. It's owned by the Building Employers' Confederation. The thieves broke into the building through a sash window on the ground floor and incredibly chiselled the whole fireplace out of the wall. It weighs half a tonne, so they had to dismantle it and carry nine huge pieces of marble out through the front door. We reckon there's now a lucrative trade in these classic marble fireplaces, so if you can help us find this one, please ring. Finally, some pieces of jewellery and silver which would only be worth a few pounds but must have been very precious to the people who lost them. Each one has a personal motto or mark. First, a golden wedding ring, which simply says, with love, Charles. What about this cross? It looks like a confirmation gift. It says Maria Story, 9377. These silver christening spoons are both engraved with the name Astrid, and she must be 68 by now because there's a date on the back, 7th of December, 1919. And perhaps this was a special Christmas present. It says, Mum, with love, Xmas 81. 
we've got some gold cufflinks with the initials OP on them and some silver ones with J and F. This silver bracelet looks like an 18th or 21st birthday present. It's inscribed Dave and on the back, Love Mum and Dad, July 1972. Now there's a set of spoons inscribed with something that looks like an S and J.A. Dahl has lost his serving spoon. And finally, look at this miniature portrait of an 18th century gentleman. The name on the back is Thomas Moss. Be wonderful if any of his descendants rang us tonight. But do call us if you recognise any of these items. The number you must know it almost by heart, 01811 That's 01811 Now to the incident desk where we invite the police to appeal to you directly about cases across the country. In fact, from a burglary on the Scottish borders to three vicious attacks in the southeast and the theft of a valuable diamond in London. Here are Constable Helen Phelps and Superintendent David Hatcher. Firstly, the brutal murder of 18-year-old Rachel Muse, a popular outgoing girl who worked at the Newcastle airport. On the evening of Tuesday the 2nd of June, she was battered to death in her flat in this block in Saxondale Road, Newcastle-upon-Tyne. Rachel left a friend's flat in an adjoining block at 9.20pm that evening. She wasn't seen again until her father discovered her body the following day. There were no signs of forced entry into her flat, so she may have known her killer. On the night of the murder at 10.15, a man was seen running away from the area of the flats towards Newlyn Road. He's about 20, six foot, thin, with a fresh complexion, rosy cheeks and short, tidy, fair hair. He was wearing a short navy blue jacket, possibly quilted, dark trousers and trainers. We think the killer may be a local man and that someone knows his identity. Rachel lived in a busy re residential area, so if you saw something that Tuesday night, the 2nd of June, please ring us now. Next, take a look at this gold chain. It has three charms attached, an Aquarius zodiac sign, a heart and a beer barrel. One just like this was taken an, during an attack in which the 81-year-old victim was held at knife point and raped. The attack happened in the Addifield area of Hemel Hempstead, Hertfordshire in late March. The attacker is in his early 20s, 5'8 to 5'10, with brown curly hair. On the 7th of June, there was a similar rape and robbery of an 87-year-old woman in the North Kent village of Hartley. Despite the appalling attack, the victim has been able to help us give us this artist's impression. He's a man in his late twenties, stocky build with brown hair, possibly wavy. He was wearing a dark leather bomber jacket, a white open neck shirt and black gloves. And he stole a lady's gold wristwatch like this one. It's about 60 years old and has an expanding bracelet, but some of the links are slightly dented. These attacks have not been connected, but they are similar. If you recognize the descriptions or have seen either the gold chain or the watch, ring us now. Tonight we need your help to catch two masked men and possibly a third who terrified Evelyn Vincent, a 76-year-old widow, and stole her life's collection of specially made jewellery. This is the only remaining piece. Hume Hall, her isolated home in Berwickshire, Scotland, was broken into at 10pm on the 1st of April. She was tied up while the house was ransacked, only managing to free herself the following morning. Later, a man with a cultivated English accent phoned Kelso Cottage Hospital, insisting someone should go to help her. Two witnesses remember seeing a black car near Hume Hall, possibly a Datsun Bluebird like this one. These boots, which have marks on the soles, may have been used by someone working in very high temperatures. They were found along the A697, Edinburgh to Newcastle Road, together with these items, a muddy tracksuit, a blue zipper jacket with paint on, and this brown hold-all. Look at this artist's impression. It's one of the stolen rings. If you've seen anything like it, or recognise any of the items here, call us now. Next, an Easter break that ended in tragedy. Stephen Burke, a promising 19-year-old amateur soccer player, is lying in a coma in Queen Mary's Hospital, Roehampton. Around midnight on Easter Sunday, that's the 19th of April, he and two friends were involved in a fight with five others on the shopper's car park in the centre of Presthaven Sands Holiday Park near Prestatyn in North Wales. His friends received a broken nose and bruising, but Stephen was rushed to hospital, critically ill. They'd spent the evening at the Sands Disco and were on their way back to their caravan when the attack took place. There were up to 6,000 people at the camp that weekend. Stephen was in a group of 20 that had travelled from London. We are anxious to speak to anyone involved in the fight or who might have witnessed it and we particularly want to trace these two men. 
They're in their late teens or early 20s. So if you can help, call us now. We'd like you to take a look at this artist's impression of a unique Marquise diamond valued at £330,000. It was set in a platinum ring and was stolen together with other jewellery and £1,200 cash from a house in Holland Villas Road, London West 14, on Saturday the 25th of April. At 1am, when the occupants returned home, they were met by masked men, possibly as many as five. Pillowcases were put over their heads and their wrists and ankles handcuffed. They were then stripped of their jewellery and shut in a bathroom. The thieves promised to ring the police to give the couple's whereabouts and a little later, Scotland Yard received this call. I'd like to report robbery, number 1616, Holland Villas, in Holland Park. I say one more time for you. I'd like to report robbery, 16, Holland Villas, OK? Please give us a ring if you recognise that voice or have been offered the diamond. A £10,000 reward is offered for information leading to a successful conviction. Finally, do you recognise this face, or for that matter, these pyjamas? 200 of these chaps have been advertising beds in shops around the country, but four of them have walked. The first disappeared from this shop in West London. Police believe he might have had assistance because it seems he left through the skylight. Another hippo vanished from this shop in Derby on the 24th of March, and two more have gone from shops in Epsom and Ealing, West London. This last fellow has been recaptured. Here he is, back in the safekeeping of the Metropolitan Police. If you've seen any of these gentlemen out and about, or in undesirable company, remember, there is a reward. And the number to ring if you can help on any of those crimes is 01811 8055. That's 01811 8055, direct to the studio here. Now to Incident Desk, where we invite the police to appeal to you directly about cases across the country, from a sex attack on Merseyside to the Yorkshire couple who've conned their way across the North and Midlands, and from a museum in London, the theft of precious model steam engines. Here is Superintendent David Hatcher and Constable Helen Phelps. First, that armed raid on a strong room opposite Harrods in London last Sunday. When it opened in 1983, the Safe Deposit Centre was hailed as the ultimate in high security, with vast steel doors and computer-coded entry systems. But at three o'clock on Sunday afternoon, two men in city suits found a way through all this gadgetry. They produced guns, handcuffed the guards, and helped themselves to just about as much as they could carry. The guards have helped us produce photo fits off the two. This one is middle-aged, five foot eight, slim and weather-beaten. The other, 30 to 35, five foot six to five foot eight and well built. A third man who may have been a lookout is in his late forties with collar length hair. And one of them left behind these glasses. And this bag is thought to be very similar to the ones they used to carry away the valuables. Although 113 strong boxes were ransacked, so far only 49 victims have come forward. We've just received the first photographs of some of the missing valuables. A golden diamond jewelry set, a 22 karat gold locket with Arabic calligraphy and a basket design pendant with red and green onyx and diamonds. If you've got a clue about any of these men or about the jewellery, contact us now. A substantial reward is being offered. Next, we need you to help us find David and Maureen Tyson, who we'd like to talk to about the disappearance of over £100,000 worth of goods all over the country and even in Spain. These are just some of the goods that have been taken in the last three years. Their method is to steal checkbooks and buy or hire goods with them. Our colleagues in Spain also want to speak to them about a missing hire car from Alicante. Tyson is 40, six foot, stocky, and walks with a slight limp in his left leg. Maureen is 29, five foot five and plump. She also operates alone and we know they're both extremely plausible. Ring us if you know where they are. And now a particularly nasty rape which took place in Liverpool on the 27th of May. Around 10 that morning, a young woman, eight and a half months pregnant, was walking her dog in a park in the Otterspool area of the city when she was attacked and raped by a man wielding a screwdriver like this one. Despite the ordeal, she was able to complete this video fit of the man. He was about five foot eight with brown hair and in need of a shave, and he had a local accent. Now, he told the woman that his girlfriend, who was also pregnant, had walked out on him and had broken her nose. This could be the best clue we have to his identity. So if you know him or his girlfriend, ring us. This Tuesday, another woman was attacked just a mile from Otterspool Park. 
Someone came to her rescue and the attacker ran off. We think he could be the same man. His description is very similar and he may have crooked yellow teeth. Ring us if you know him. Remember last month we showed you a reconstruction of a robbery in Essex? Three men posing as police officers took their way into an elderly couple's home. We're from Scotland Yard and we're investigating a series of jewellery thefts. They got away with £30,000 cash and antiques. We now believe that this is linked to possibly dozens of other robberies across the southeast by an organised team of 20 or more men. In the most recent case, on the 16th of June, two men, again posing as police, got away with £97,000 worth of travellers' cheques from a house in this street, Catherine Road, Forest Gate in East London. The leader was about 45 to 50, 5 foot 8, with greying brown hair. His accomplice was younger, about 35, six foot and well built. The cheques reappeared a week later in Amsterdam. £22,000 worth was successfully cashed around the town until one efficient cashier decided to verify the cheque serial numbers. At this point, the man took off, leaving behind this passport. It's a false one, bearing the name Sam Anderson. But we're sure this is a genuine photograph of the man. Take a close look at him. And this is the cheque he left behind. If you think you recognise any of these men or this handwriting, ring us now. Finally, we'd like you to help us with a bit of train spotting, and I don't mean intercity 125s. Just take a look at this. Eleven beautiful working models like these have been stolen from the London Toy Model Museum in Paddington. The museum has a magnificent railway collection seen by 80,000 visitors every year. Sometime between Sunday evening, June the 21st, and first thing on Tuesday the 23rd, thieves climbed into the museum garden, broke into a storage shed and made off with 11 different models worth about £5,000. Amongst them was a King Richard I engine, similar to this one, but dark green and lined with black and orange. Another looked like this, a London and North Western engine, only red with black panelling. And this is a photograph of the most valuable of the stolen engines, a Gage 1 Johnson Spinner. Alone it's worth £2,000. If you've spotted any of these under suspicious circumstances or been offered any at a cut-down price, we'd like to hear from you. There is a £500 reward. And the number to ring, as always, if you can help with any of those incident desk cases, is 01811 8055. That's 01811 8055. Well, now to incident desk, where the police appeal to you directly. Tonight, jewellery known as Blue John jewellery, stolen from shops in Castleton in Derbyshire, a man who conned thousands of pounds in Gloucester and left a trail of unpaid bills across the south. And from Cornwall, the mystery of camping gear found in a field. What's happened to the owner? Here are Constable Helen Phelps and Superintendent David Hatcher. Police in Bristol are now very concerned for the safety of Shirley Banks, who's been missing since Thursday night. Shirley, who's 28, lives in Clifton, Bristol, and she and her husband have only been married a month, and friends and family all say she was very happy. She was last seen on the evening of the 8th, shopping at Debenhams in Bristol. She didn't return, but next day it's thought she phoned Alexandra Workwear, where she's a manager, to say she was ill. We think Shirley had very little cash with her, but she was carrying an access card and a NatWest checkbook. Her orange mini is also missing, registration number HWL 507N. Take another look at her. She's 28, 5 foot 6, slim and blonde. If you've seen Shirley or her car, ring us now. We'll let you know if there are developments. Still in Bristol, an armed robbery at an industrial estate on the outskirts of the city. At midday on Thursday the 10th of September, an armed man burst into Cox's and Sons, a kitchen unit factory on the Avonmouth estate, and took £11,000 from the wages clerk. Witnesses have helped to compile this rather striking video fit. He's in his mid-twenties, between six foot and six foot two, and slim. Notice those little pieces of blue-green cloth knitted into his beard. And we think the dreadlocks might be a disguise, so maybe this makes him look more familiar. He also had a white accomplice, aged 35 to 40, 5 foot 8 tall, with black shoulder-length hair. The robber was spotted earlier in the day in a yellow Datsun Bluebird, like this one. It was parked on the Avonmouth estate in Third Way, just 150 yards from where the robbery took place. Take another look at these two, and if you've seen them, or know them, ring us now. The stone in this jewellery is known as Blue John, and it's only found under one hillside in the Derbyshire village of Castleton. 
Most of the jewellery is sold by small gift shops in the centre of the village, and over the past three months, three of them have been burgled. On the 14th of July, there was a break-in at the Speedwell Cavern shop. Then, less than a month later, the Crook Barn had two small windows broken, and everything on the display was scooped up. And just last week, on the 5th of October, burglars smashed through the roof of the Toll Bar gift shop in Cross Street. Altogether, £53,000 worth of jewellery is gone. Now, Blue John is unique to Castleton and is rarely sold elsewhere, so if you've been offered any, call us now. Next, have a look at this man. He conned £14,000 out of a Gloucestershire businessman earlier this year. We know quite a lot about him, except his true identity and his whereabouts. He's 45, about 5 foot 7 and rather fat. He suffers from psoriasis, a flaking skin condition, and his usernames Geoffrey Williams, Geoffrey Martin and James Phillips. We believe he gambles regularly. He's an accomplished blackjack player and usually drinks Bacardi and Coke. Over the past few months, he's been seen across the south, from Portsmouth to Rochester, Kent, sometimes staying in hotels and leaving without paying the bill. He may have been travelling in a beige Vauxhall Cavalier. Registration number D745RWJ. Now I'd also like to speak to this woman, Doreen Williams, who we believe could help us with information about this man. So if you know either of them, or where they are, ring us now. Finally, can you help us find a mystery camper who disappeared in June? He left these behind in a field in Hale near Penzance in Cornwall. Local police, concerned for his safety, mounted a helicopter search but found no one. There are no real clues to his identity. He must be used to camping though because everything was packed into just these three bags. Maybe this bike with the customised saddle or this book with Chadwell St Mary Christian Fellowship might look familiar. This old-fashioned engineer's mallet with marks on the handle here and here might also be a clue. We know someone cooked a meal using these just before the 13th of June. So if you're the mystery camper or you recognise anything here, call us now. If you can provide any possible new lead, no matter how small it may seem, please do ring 01 811 8055. That's 01 811 8055. And now to Incident Desk, where the police appeal to you directly. Tonight, a missing couple from Jersey, an attempted hijacking in Hertfordshire, and a vicious knife attack on Merseyside. With the details, here are Constable Helen Phelps and Superintendent David Hatcher. First, we'd like your help with the mysterious disappearance of a middle-aged couple from Jersey. On October the 11th, Nicholas and Elizabeth Newell said goodbye to their sons at 3 o'clock in the afternoon after a birthday celebration for Mrs Newell. They've not been seen since. When police were called to their house at St. Braillard a week later, the central heating was on, there was food on the table, washing on the line, and the house was unlocked. Extensive land, sea and air searches have so far revealed nothing. We know they were planning a trip, their passports and car ferry ticket were left behind. The Newells have family connections in Scotland and a home in Spain. During August and September, they travelled to London, Scotland and the southwest of England and we'd like to hear from anyone they visited. Look at them again, and also these two other photos of Mr Newell. Please call us if you think you may have seen them or have had dealings with them in the recent past. Next, we hope you might recognise this knife. It may help trace a man who assaulted two young girls in the Bootle and Seaforth area of Merseyside. On October the 14th, he left it behind after assaulting a 10-year-old girl on waste ground by the railway near Akenside Street, Bootle. Two weeks later, on the 30th of October, an 11-year-old girl was collecting for Guy Fawkes night outside this shop in Seaforth. The man forced her to go with him to a block of flats in Sandy Road, where he assaulted her twice. The girls have helped compile this picture of him. He's between 20 and 30, and notice the unusual V-shaped hairstyle, possibly dark brown on top and very blonde on the sides. He may also have birthmarks on his arms and legs, and a tattoo on his left hand with the words I love above a heart shape. Do ring us if you know him. An armed gang caused a serious road accident in Hertfordshire on October the 20th when they tried to stop a Securicore van near the village of Cuffley. The Securicore vehicle was forced to halt in a line of traffic and then rammed by a white Ford Transit which then carried on, hitting two other cars and injuring an elderly lady. At first, the Securicore driver thought there'd been an ordinary accident until he noticed men with guns running towards him. Despite the damage to his van, he was able to drive away and the suspects fled empty-handed. 
Notice the steel battering ram built into the side of the transit. It had been disguised with a white tarpaulin. The van had been stolen a few weeks before, along with these red and white Sierras. These false number plates were possibly made in the same car accessory shop. Maybe you work in one and remember dealing with them. So if you can help in any way, ring us. Finally, Christmas seems to have come early for thieves in the southeast. Last month, two entire lorry loads of imported toys worth over £90,000 were pinched. Nearly a thousand of these clodbuster radio-controlled toy trucks were stolen from a dockside lorry compound in Felixstowe on October the 27th. They were the first consignment to arrive in Britain, though more are due to arrive soon, and come in kit form boxed up like this. Normally they would be on sale for around £150. And you might come across these teddies. A lorry load of almost 3,000 of them disappeared from Swanley in Kent on the 19th of October. The lorry trailer was later seen being dumped by two men in Verco Road, South East London. They also had with them a white Ford Escort Mark III model. We think the toys may surface before Christmas, so if you've seen any of the bears or those trucks, ring us now. If you think you can provide any possible new lead, please do ring 01811 8055. That's 01811 8055. Well, now to Incident Desk, and tonight a hit and run in Merseyside, a series of armed raids in Cumbria, and the search for a con man in the southwest of England. Here are Superintendent David Hatcher and Constable Helen Phelps. We'd like your help to solve the murder of 37 year old Elsa Hannaway in the Moss Side area of Manchester early on the 30th of October. After an evening out, Mrs. Hannaway was seen outside the West Indian Community Centre in Westwood Road at 1.15 a.m. But from then until about 2.30 a.m., where she went is unclear, and Manchester Police are very anxious to find out about her movements during that time. Around 2.30 a.m., a couple in a car saw a man attacking a woman just inside the entrance to Whitworth Park in Moss Lane East. This is a video fit of him. He's in his 20s and wears his hair in dreadlocks. That night he had on a red, green and yellow striped woolly hat. At 3.10am, a similar man was seen running out of the park and down Hathersage Road. Mrs Hannaway was later found in the park, suffering from head injuries and hypothermia. She'd also been raped and died in hospital that day. Near the spot where Mrs Hannaway was discovered, police found this watch. It's a seconda and it has a broken silver strap and missing from Elsa's wrist was a thin gold chain. Look at this face again. There is a 500 pound reward from the local West Indian community for information leading to an arrest. Shortly after 1 a.m. on Saturday the 10th of October, 31-year-old Daniel Callahan was knocked off his bicycle on the A506 Kirby to Ormskirk Road in Merseyside. He was killed instantly, but the driver of the car did not stop. However, Particles of red paint as small as this were found on Daniel's clothes. If it's the car's original colour, it's one of two types. Most probably it was a Volvo 340 or 360 model in signal red and manufactured since 1984. Or it could be one of these Jaguars, the XJS, XJ6 or 12 models in Sebring red and made between 1981 and 1983. And tiny glass particles indicate that the car's windscreen was most probably damaged in the collision. Now, if you know of a red car similar to these with damage to the front bumper, bonnet and windscreen, please ring us now. We'd like to talk to this man about six building society robberies in the southeast area of London. He is seen here in the Anglia Building Society in Bexley Heath in April this year. He threatened staff with what we believe is a gun carried in that white plastic bag and got away with nearly £2,000. He's about 25, 5 foot 9 inches tall, slim build with dark brown hair. He has robbed three other building societies and so far he's got away with nearly £6,000. Give us a call if you know him. There is a reward for information leading to arrest and conviction. Next, an armed robber who's been operating in Cumbria. Here he is in a building society in Carlisle on the 7th of July. He may be one of the two men who've taken over £24,000 in six similar raids in Penrith, Preston, Workington and Carlisle. This video was taken from inside a toy shop as the man hurried away from the building society in Workington. These artists' impressions were done by witnesses to two of the raids and they appear to be quite similar. But this one could be the second man. So call us if you know them. There's a reward of £10,000 for information leading to a conviction. 
This is the face of a con man operating throughout the southwest. He calls himself Peter Davis or John Carr, and over the past year he's been obtaining credit from chain stores by using a false AA membership card as proof of identity. To date, he's committed some 25 offences, amounting to about £54,000 in all, and in towns as far apart as Penzance and Bristol. As Peter Davis, he gives either a home address in Burris near Helston in Cornwall, or that of a false company, Alpha Electronics in Exeter. As John Carr, he gives an address in Torpoint, Cornwall. If you recognise him, please get in touch. The number to call is 01811 8055. That's 01811 8055.